Welcome. OK, so ladies and gentlemen, so what I'm going to do is show you how to graph y equals negative ln of negative x plus 2. So I like to go ahead and write down what our transformations are going to be. And then we'll graph the parent graph and then the transformations. So in this case, I have, um, I have a negative, um, uh, negative 1 being multiplied by my function. So that's going to tell me to reflect the x-axis. I have a negative 1 being multiplied by my x inside the function. So that's going to tell me to reflect the y-axis. And then I have a positive 2, which is going to tell me to shift left, shift two units left. All right. So now what I'd like to do is, again, graph my parent graph to make sure that I have everything correct. All right. Now, when looking at my parent graph, again, um, all I simply want to do is just graph the parent graph with no transformations or reflections. Then what we'll do is we'll apply our transformations um, to our problem. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do is ln of x. Now, we can just go ahead and, again, determine points for this. Um, you guys can just plug in points. We know that if I chose 1, then ln of 1 is going to be when y equals 0. So that's the first point. And that just comes in just graphing the parent graph. Um, I'm not multiplying it by a multiplier. So therefore, your y-intercept, or x-intercept, I'm sorry, is going to be 1. Then you can choose another point. Remember, we're just choosing an xy table. So in doing an xy table for this, um, you can just pick whatever points you want, 1, and let's just pick 3. So if I did the ln of 3, I'll just plug that in my calculator. ln of 3 is 1.98. So I'm just going to leave that as 0. And then 3 would be 1.98. One uh, 1.1. All right, and again, this is an approximation because e is an irrational number. So over three, one, two, three, and then instead of up one, it'd be like just over one. All right, so my graph's going to look something like this. And here we are again. Remember from the uh, parent graph, we have my asymptote is x equals zero. The domain is from zero to infinity. And the range is from negative infinity to infinity. And that's for my paragraph. And that's going to pretty much be unchanged unless we're multiplying it by some multipliers, either inside our function or outside of our function, meaning some numbers that we're going to multiply by. Um, however, the domain, range, and asymptote aren't going to change. Really, your two points would be the only ones that are going to be affected. All right, so now we have these transformations. So the first transformation that I'm going to want to apply before I do my reflections is I'm going to want to apply my shift left to. So currently, I have two points, 3 comma 1.1. All right. So if I shift this graph over two, two units to the left, I'm now going to have a new point at negative 1, 0. And I'll also have at 1 comma 1.1. All right, so now, and then my asymptote also, instead of it being at 0, it would now be at negative 2. So if I was going to graph this graph, it would look something like that. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have two reflections. I'm now going to take this graph and reflect it over my y-axis. So then, at negative 1, reflected over the y-axis, again, is going to take me back over to 1 comma 0. And let's actually do this in a different color. And then at 1 comma negative 1.1, if I reflect this over the um, y at y-axis, now that's going to become negative 1 comma 1.1. And my asymptote, instead of being at negative 2, is going to now be at positive 2. So you can see the graph is now going to look like that. And you can see how it is. Um, really, this would be the same point. Maybe look something better like that. All right, so now the graph has been reflected over the y-axis, but now I need to reflect it over the x-axis. So if this point is at negative 1, 1.1, 1 .1, now it needs to go down to negative 1, negative 1.1. 1 .1. So then this point, though, is still going to remain the same. And now my final graph is going to look something like that. So again, here's my original graph. I took this graph and I shifted it left to, which gives me this graph. Then I take the blue and reflect it over the y-axis, which gives me this graph. Then I reflect it over the x-axis, which now gives me that graph. So when looking at it, 
Um, now what we want to make sure we do is just eliminate these graphs that we used to help us graph our original function. And then what we can do is kind of determine what is going to be our domain and range and so forth. All right, so we don't have this asymptote anymore. All right, so now you can see my domain is going to go all the way over to this asymptote, which remember now is at 2. So my asymptote is now at x equals 2. So therefore, my domain is from negative infinity to positive 2. And my range, this graph still is going to increase in, um, indefinitely to infinity and to negative infinity. So my range is still going to be from negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a natural logarithm with two reflections and a horizontal shift. Thanks.